Not a problem. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Our scripture for this afternoon is John chapter 11. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, mm -hmm. yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Believe thou this. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I want to talk to Sister Flo for me. You have family reunion and everybody's designated to bring a dish or whoever, whatever, you know. So in the midst, you have a cousin of yours named Rodney. You haven't seen Rodney in about five or six years. He's coming, him and his family are coming from North Carolina. So mostly everybody's already at Lincoln Woods and they're uh, Set the table, put the balloons up, and it's be a 30 year anniversary. Cousin Rodney ain't around. So you call him, he said, Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna bring my specialty. He makes fried chicken with a little bit of lemon on it or whatever. But everybody's waiting for this fried chicken because it's been five years since you've seen Cousin Rodney. Hang up, half hour goes by, 45 minutes, you're thinking that he's lost. Then you call. Can't find. Him. He's not picking up. Something went. Something happened. Come to find out, cousin Rodney got into a car accident and he ended up dying. So you go into shop. Family's in mourning, even though you're celebrating because of the fact that he died. There's a there's a uh, a mixed feeling, a mixed emotion because you're celebrating family. Yet your cousin Rodney, that you haven't seen in five years, passes away. Mm. And what I want to talk about is that how we as Christians know that there is more to life than what we have here. Mm. And it's funny how uh, Reverend Mills kind of set it off this, the whole stage on what we're, we're going to be talking about. Mm. Amen? Amen. Amen. I think what, what happens is, is that everybody knows that everyone dies. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if you're good, bad, or ugly. Mm -hmm. Most of us are ugly. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Doesn't matter if you're righteous or not. Everyone dies. And every time you like, there are people that try to manipulate the situation, they prolong the situation. You see it on TV how scientists are trying to come up with some kind of uh, a, a way where we can live forever. Ugh. Who wants to live forever here? <laughs> I mean, it gets worse and worse and worse. So, mm -hmm. what's there to actually live for here? Amen. Amen. And again, it's, there's nobody special when it comes to death. You got Dr. Martin Luther King. You got Malcolm X. You got Albert Einstein. You got Adolf Hitler, you got Bin Laden, Saddam Hussein, they all die. Doesn't matter if they're good, doesn't matter if they're bad, doesn't matter if you, you can help as many people as you want, or you can destroy as many people as you want. The bottom line is everybody dies. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Now, it's kind of like if you was eating a bowl of, ice, uh, of uh, ice cream and somebody put arsenic on your ice cream every day, or a bowl of oatmeal, and people, somebody was putting arsenic, you won't die like that. But eventually, you will die because of the arsenic. People walking around every single day and don't even realize that they're spiritually eating yeah. arsenic because they mm -hmm. accept it. They don't have any. Uh, idea of how to conquer death because of the fact everything in their mind is fine. 
you know. So they, it's kind of like a hurry up office. I'm going to do how I live life to the fullest, you know, eat, marry, you know, drink and be married. That's the way the world looks at life in and of itself. They don't look at the aftermath because they don't understand what the aftermath is. They don't understand what's beyond where we go from here. They don't understand. But there's a blessing when it comes to death. Even though we mourn people that pass on, there is a blessing. Because even though the scripture says that the wages of sin is death, death brings you that much closer to God. Mm. And if you didn't die, how can you, how can you, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? How can you equivalent to the wages of death? If you didn't die, how can you get right with God? In this body, we are scarred, we're mocked, we are consumed with a sinful nature. So if you didn't die, you would live 100 years, 200 years, 300 years in the same situation. So something had to die. Someone had to die to alleviate the situation that they are in. And if it wasn't for Christ, our Savior, we, we're stuck in a situation that we can't get out of. And, you know, it, it, it's funny because I've always, I always questioned how God allowed Adam and Eve to have kids after the fact, after the fall, after they uh, disobeyed. Because imagine if, they, and this is just a, uh, one of my quirks that I have in my head. Imagine if Adam and Eve had kids being perfect. And then had the fall. Then where would their kids be? Would they? And then they had kids after. So you know, have perfect kids, and then you have imperfect kids. And now they're pointing at each other. I'm better than you. You're better. It gets ugly. So now we're all in the same boat. Every single one of us are in the same boat. And I know that that's how God planned. I'm not saying God planned for all to be sinners. What I'm saying is God planned so you couldn't point the finger and try to be better than that one. Even though this world looks upon it, we're leaving in our skin color. Amen? Amen. But again, if it wasn't for Christ who got in harm's way, so to speak. And what I mean by harm's way, let's say, say Brother Tyrone, let's say you owe somebody money. And they've been, like, threatening you. And they're, like, saying, you know what? I'm telling you right now, if I don't get my money by 2 o'clock, something's going to happen. And you blow it off. Now me and you are kicking, like I'm kicking it on the corner, and I see a car go by, and they take out a gun, and they start shooting, and I get in harm's way, so you wouldn't take the hit. That's what Christ did to every single one of us. He got in harm's way. He didn't have to, but he got in harm's way. And it, again, if it wasn't for Christ dying on the cross, we would all be 